Well, joining me today is somebody who I've gotten to know over the last maybe year or so. She is the former organizer of VO North in Toronto. She is a wildly successful voice actor herself, and she's also the creator of the new VO Kickstart program. Please welcome to the VO Pro Podcast, my dear friend, Derv Latrainer. Hi, Derv. Hi, thank you for having me. You have very low standards, but I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about uh, the VO Kickstart program, maybe even VO North. Uh, but first of all, I, for people that don't know you, and that's probably mostly here in the States, because I think you're probably you, Bev Standing, Emma O'Neill. Uh, that's like kind of the, the holy trinity of Canadian female voiceover. For those of us in the States who may not know you, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. I've been doing voiceover for 10 years. Um it started just as a way to earn a little bit of a side income and um i just kind of took off so i ended up going full time i started out uh i moved to toronto to become a famous singer uh i don't know if you know but i'm not a famous singer uh so that didn't work out but sometime during that phase i found out what this thing called voiceover was and i took uh, a, a six-week program and I did a demo. I did some training after that. I did a demo, uh, commercial demo. And then I sent it out to it. There's three non-union agencies in Canada, sent it out to them, never heard back, forgot all about what this voiceover thing was. So three years later, I've given up my pop star aspirations and I'm working in the music business on at a booking agency. And I get an email from an agent saying, we, op we only open up our roster every few years. Would you be interested in being considered? And I was like, sure, I, I do need a side income. So I joined the roster, started booking work regularly through them, used that to, re I reinvested all that into building my home studio, buy my microphone, sound treatment, all that stuff, and then jumped into the online casting game. And for at least five years, it was 90 plus percent of my income. Um, I now would say it's about 10% of my income. I've really switched it around through marketing and I have ongoing clients now, but um, that's me in a nutshell. Wow. Voice so you, you booked a non-union agency in Canada from a tape that you sent three years prior. So that's even when people, if people are marketing too, you're sending out emails. If you don't get a response, I always try and remind them that, you know, just because you didn't get a response doesn't mean that they haven't logged you and won't reach out to you whenever they find a project that they actually think is right for you. Because it's that's happened true. with clients too. They're like, yeah, you sent me your demo a year or two ago. And you know what? We have a spot that we think you'd be good for. So, you know, yeah. when you're, when you're sending it out, I always say, it's not always in vain. There's, you know, you never know when it's going to come back. Well, and I think as voice actors, uh, and and if you've ever dabbled in direct marketing to clients, I think we we suffer from this thing called the imaginary no, right? M the vast majority of the time, when you reach out to a client, you're not going to get a no. You're not going to get an answer at all, right? You just hear nothing, much like auditioning. The difference is that that email may sit in their file for a year, two, three, five, P several times a year, probably at least once a quarter, I get an email from somebody that I've marketed to who has never responded. Yeah. And they say, hey, Paul, thanks for keeping in touch. I've finally got a project for you. Most of the time, they'll hand it to me. Some of the time, I've got to audition right? Yeah. But you're right, man. When that stuff sits out there and just, when you land in somebody's file, you're in a good spot. I'm just curious when you said, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you'll have to audition. I've noticed lately, and I'm just curious if you find the same, that there's a lot more direct from demo bookings uh, in North America. I know in Europe and the UK, they kind of, that's been normal for a while, but I'm noticing in North America more and more, I'm booking without even having to audition. Are you noticing that too? Yeah, it's really nice. <laughs> yes, but I can't say I can I can see a trend up or down. That's oh. always been the case for me. I mean, like I've always gotten a mm -hmm. tiny amount of my work from folks, usually from clients that I've already worked with, but sometimes from clients I haven't, that will book me straight off the demo or straight off what they heard on the website. Uh, and And yes, you're right. There's more of that in the UK. There's more of that in Europe. I honestly think, 
the Europeans and the, the Brits have it right. Like, if you know I can perform, it's probably not a great leap to know that if I did a financial services spot that I could do, you know, a, a, a technical spot, whatever it might be. Uh, the ability to perform in a in a particular genre, I think, is much more important than it is to be able to perform that specific copy. If you can, if you can read, you can read, right? So the switch from heavily pay to plays to marketing. Talk to me about that and how you learned to market your business. Well, I have a pretty big sales background. Um, before I was an aspiring pop star, I was a commercial real estate agent at the booking agency. I also do sales, 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 sales. Um, but I've just kind of landed the marketing email game. So the reason why I switched from online to online casting sites to trying to find my own clients, as I'm sure you know, I'm sure most people watching this know, it's just easier. It's the online casting, it's a hustle. You're audition, 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 audition. Oh, I got a booking. Do the booking, go back. Audition, audition, audition. Whereas um, now, I mean, I think you should always kind of do marketing, but there will be um, periods where you do more marketing and then you can just kind of coast for a little while because right now I'm, I'm coasting. I've got clients just coming to me. They just send me a script and say, hey, can you um, get this back to us within a day or two? Or... Uh, they'll say, can we put you forward for this opportunity? What would you quote? So it's just so much nicer to not have to hustle as hard. And I feel like that should be kind of the goal for most voice actors where you get to a point where you just have people coming to you. Yeah. I do think though you, that you can coast for periods, but if yeah. you coast for it's too long, busy. it's yeah, it's just like a car. If you coast for too long, eventually you're going to slow down and stop. So you've yep. got to keep feeding the, the machine when it when it comes yep. to marketing. What I like to do sometimes is um, I'm in a couple of accountability groups, which I think is a game changer for your voiceover career. Uh, and I'll run little challenges with them. So I'll say, OK, guys, uh, who's up for a little challenge this week? Why don't we all agree to or whoever's in for it do 10 marketing emails a day for the next five days or, or something like that? Um, whenever you need to get a little more boost. And and again, like we talked about earlier, you never know when those will come back to you. But, um, you know, there are there are some jobs that come right away from it. Um, I did it last week and I booked a job two days later from that company. What do you feel like are the major challenges for voice actors, either when it comes to marketing, when it comes to pay to plays? The bottom line is, what are the major challenges in finding work today? A lot of people's own fear like you said, uh, not bothering to reach out because you're like, well, they're probably going to say no anyway. Or um, I remember years ago, I sent a marketing email out and I checked the website. There was no, always check the website, by the way, before you submit, because a lot of production companies will actually have procedures for voice talent to submit through. So I always check that first because there's nothing worse than sending them an email and them saying, yeah, it's right on our website. Just go submit through that. Uh, but the website didn't have it. So I reached out, you know, my usual friendly email. And uh, the guy sent a very snarky email back, just really, really rude. It actually, it threw me off for a few days. Um, and I had a lot of, you know, my accountability group, they consoled me and I realized, okay, you know what? I'm not going to let this one guy stop me. Uh, and you just keep going. So I, a fear can knock a lot of people down. The online casting game, there are some sites where uh, it's getting harder to book on. Uh, Voice123, I feel like if you're not in the top two tiers of subscription, which is quite a high price point, you probably it's very, very, very hard to book on there nowadays. Um, there's... For newer talent, it's really important to get your sound quality because when you're on a when you're auditioning on an online casting site, they're not only listening to your read, they're listening to the audio quality because ninety nine percent of the time or ninety nine point nine percent you're recording from home. You're not going into a studio through online casting sites. So uh, I would say that definitely holds people back as well. Marketing, uh, and then and then on the marketing side, uh, just keep making them emails super generic. Um, 
production houses, some will get, you know, five, 10 emails a day from voice telling. Find a way to make it personal. Say, hey, I saw your latest video on blah, blah, blah. I thought it was really neat how you did this at the end uh, or something. Just put something personal in, compliment them, show them that you're actually taking the time. And then I find that usually gets a response. We mentioned earlier that you were the organizer, uh, uh, along with Tanya Buchanan, of VO North, the, the only, as far as I know, Canadian uh, voiceover conference. I like to say it's the largest Canadian voiceover conference. It's okay. also the only, but <laughs> so let's the yeah, okay. Uh, I'm going to use that uh, when I'm, you know, uh, I'll be the tallest guy in the room when I'm the only guy in the room. Yeah. Um, so uh, having been on that side of the glass, so to speak, uh, mm -hmm. what, give me your take on voiceover conferences both as a, we'll say, in that first couple few years of your career and then later on? How, how does that change? First of all, if you have not been to a conference, I would highly suggest going to one. And uh, VO North is no longer, so I'm not even trying to plug my own conference. Um, it, it really, really is. There was, I won't say who, but there's a voice actor that I knew, and for years he thought conferences were just a waste of time. Uh, and he's quite established. So purely just to prove him wrong, I asked him to be a speaker at the last year of VO North because I was like, the only way I'm going to get you to come, you're not going to buy a ticket. I just want you to come and see what it's all about. And to this day, he's just like, Dervla, I can't believe how wrong I was. It was just life changing. Just, just to be around all these other people having the same conversation, the amount you learn, even just about the industry, uh, in that one weekend or chunk of time is what it might even take you a year to learn just by yourself. You meet connections. You, yeah, it's good to get in front of agents as well. Um, but you're, you're learning how to everything possible about running a voiceover business and you make some friends along the way. And I find that not just me, but everyone, whenever you get back from the conference, you have this boost of drive. And that right there, I find, motivates me to work harder. And then I end up booking more work, which kind of pays off the conference in the end anyway. That boost of drive can be tricky, though, because I know, for example, VO Atlanta, uh, which is coming up here in a few weeks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a boost of drive, but there's also two or three days of recovery where you <laughs> you just want to lay on the couch and listen to the silence for a little while because it's so intense. And that's why it's important to have some time away to, to block off some time throughout the weekend because um, the last conference I was at was the One Voice Conference in Texas. And I'm a very social outgoing person. And by, I think it was day three, I just, I just needed an afternoon in the hotel room. I was just like, no, I can't do it. I just need to be alone right now. Just it's a lot of socializing, so you need to pace yourself as well. Yeah, we yeah. talked about this in a in a previous video. Video if you're if you're going to especially the larger conferences, uh, it's okay to take an hour every afternoon and just go up to your room and chill. If that's yeah. what you need to recharge, do it. It's yeah. Disney World. You're never going to see it all anyway, right? No. So you may as well pace yourself and give yourself that time to to rest and recover. What else? So. For the newer talent, I would find that it's um, it can be overwhelming. There's a lot coming at you. Uh, write notes and like bring a notebook and then review those notes. But if anything, it, it, it might be a little discouraging because there's so much that you realize you don't know yet. Um, but that's part of the learning process, right? So you do learn a ton. You go away with all more information than you can wrap your head around. And, but then you go back again and you've already learned that. And then the same content, you can learn an, another level of it. Like you're not, you're listening at a certain frequency whenever you only have a certain amount of knowledge or experience. Once you have that, then you can kind of really absorb the content in a deeper way. Whenever you're a bit more experienced, you'll kind of learn. I find that conferences are great for connecting with friends we have you know most of our job is stuck in i say a dark padded room talking to ourselves all day so it's really refreshing for the soul um to to go and actually see people in person but it's also great 
to really tap into what's going on right now in the industry, just staying current and kind of just chatting with people and seeing, all right, this is what's coming up. This is what I need to kind of keep my ears open for or my eyes on or how to train my skill set. I feel like that's huge because otherwise, you know, as you said, we're stuck in our tiny little padded cells talking to ourselves. We've only got one set of eyeballs on the world. When yeah. we go to a conference specifically and we're live in the room with other people as opposed to a Zoom, you know, workout training, whatever it might be, even a Zoom conference. When you're live in the room with other people and you start that exchange of information and the room could be the conference room, it could be an X session. It could be the bar or the restaurant, right? The bar is the uh, bar is a big one. Right? Yeah, <laughs> people share things at the bar they don't share in other rooms. Uh, mm -hmm. Which, and I'm only being slightly facetious because that exchange of information that now instead of having one pair of eyeballs on the world, now you've got two, five, twenty, a you know, like maybe hundreds of other eyeballs on the world. And yeah. that's when you you start to pick up information, as you said, specifically about what's going on now. I'm pretty plugged in. You're pretty plugged in. But you and I both know when we go to a conference, we get a level of information that we don't get in our normal everyday careers. Let's talk about a little bit about this. You said you moved to Toronto. Where are you from? Oh, well, I was born in Ireland, Belfast, Northern Ireland. I clearly was not raised there based on my accent. Uh, moved to Good old Kingston, Ontario, when I was five. So Kingston is about halfway between Montreal and Toronto. Okay. Um, cute little town on the water. Uh, got Queen's University and a bunch of other stuff. But yeah, that's where I grew up. And the, uh, the, the fire got lit to become a budding pop star. How did that happen? <laughs> I was always not quite... Actually, I grew up thinking I'm going to be a lawyer. And then it got time to write my LSATs and pick a schools to apply to. And I just thought, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I just can't. So that's when I kind of tried commercial real estate and I was doing okay in it. Um, but I just thought like, is this it? Is this, this is my life. It just was so, I'm a creative person. I love business as well. Um, but I thought, okay, I'm young enough. I think I was I don't know, 20, three or 24 at the time or something. I said, I'm young enough that, you know what, I can still just go for it. So I said, if what, if I could do absolutely anything in the entire world, what would it be? No restrictions. I said, I'd be an aspiring pop star uh, or be a, I'd be a pop star. Sorry. Um, either that or work in the fashion industry. So I moved to Toronto for fashion week and I worked fashion week. So I've got a little bit of event production throughout my years here as well, which is why VO North did so well, just because Tanya and I both have a background in that. But uh, what I ultimately came here for was to pursue my pop singing career. Uh, please don't look me up. <laughs> um, so, so I had I had some um, uh, wins. That Thirteen Reasons Why that Netflix show. One of my songs was on that. Degrassi. Fantastic. I had a song on that. Um, but about two years in, my parents just said, okay, you tried this now, get a real job. <laughs> so, wow. so of course you went into voiceover. <laughs> yeah. You know? so, if you have primed your parents to the point where you go into voiceover and they consider that a real job, you have done your work. Well done. I'm not going to lie. They, they politely held their voice for years until I started making money on it, at it. And they're like, oh, oh, this thing's actually a viable career. Okay. You talked about, obviously we've, we've all got to be good voice actors, but you talked yeah. about, uh, learning the marketing side, reducing your reliance on the pay to plays. How important is that in the career of just any old voice actor? You know, it depends how much you want to hustle. Honestly, I know people are saying it's harder than ever to book on online casting sites. I don't agree with that. Um, they say there's more competition nowadays. I mean, I guess uh, with home studios and such, but um, I don't know if you make it a priority, if you don't mind doing 10, possibly up to 20 auditions a day, go for it. But um, for me, I just, I just started to get burned out. I couldn't do the hustle. Uh, and it's much nicer to just wake up in the morning to a few emails in my inbox saying, Hey, here's a script. This is our budget. Get it back to us. And you're like, lovely. 
great. I'd rather be in the booth recording paid work than possibly paid work. And I'll repeat what you said earlier. It's easier, uh, although I will never call direct marketing easy, but it <laughs> is easier to, to you and to me to be able to do that work for, let's say, an hour a day than to emotionally auditioning, 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 auditioning on the pay to play specifically is a grind. It is an absolute emotional grind. Yeah. And emotionally, yeah. I think you're right. It's much easier to do direct marketing. Yeah. With the key to with pay to plays is um, you just, you submit it and move on. That's it. Don't, I mean, unless you want to start looking back at your stats and depending on the site, some platforms can like it or thumbs up it. And then you can see, okay, what did I do there? And if you want to start analyzing uh, what's getting liked versus what's not fine, but otherwise you're going to drive yourself crazy. If you, you know, if you're like, Oh, that audition was really good. Oh, it's two days now. I still haven't heard back. No, no, no. Just forget about it. Just, yeah. and, and use it as an opportunity to practice your craft and your editing skills and, yeah. Specifically to get your audition process down too. I think it's hugely yeah. valuable for that uh, yeah. because nowhere else are you going to get the volume, excuse yeah. me, of auditions to be able to sit down and knock out 10, 15, 20 auditions in a day, right? Um, yeah. I've got three great agents. I'm not getting that kind of volume through those no. agents, um, no. nor do I expect to, but to get your audition process down to a science so that you can ingest that casting notice, figure out the, the spec and the script, understand the nuance that you're going to deliver the copy with, maybe do two or three takes, edit those down, send the email that goes along with it, right? If you can get that down to five, six, seven minutes, now you can start to audition in the kind of volume where you can make a little money. If you If it takes you 20 minutes to do an audition, your volume's yeah. not going to be there, right? And the more you do it, the quicker it is. Oh, actually, I will admit that sometimes if there's an audition that I'm struggling with, I'll take longer to do it because you want to do a good job. Sure. Um, yeah. But yeah, you're right. On average, uh, some tips for online casting sites, just again, because it was how I made the majority of my money. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people don't realize, don't slate. You don't need to slate on an online casting site audition cut out as much dead air, just start right into the audition. If you really want to, you can say two takes, three takes, but then one second of silence, then the audition, make sure the levels are good. Make sure it's not too quiet or not too high, not peaking. Um, yeah, those are kind of the basics. I know that is super basic. If anyone is doing online casting site auditions, they probably know this already, but I think those are just some small tweaks that will help really with um, people's chances of getting booked. Let's talk about tweaks and basics. Let's talk about the VO Kickstart program. This is uh, right. this is something new that you've just created within the last few months. Tell us about the program. So I I just got to the point where so many people were asking me how to get into voiceover, and it's it's not a quick answer. I mean, you're starting an entire business. So um, as I said, I've been doing this ten years, and I also do a little bit of um, production, uh, like commercial productions as well. Um, so I have experience from that side of the industry as well. And when I was at a booking agency for music, I was an agent. So I kind of, although it's not voiceover, it's still kind of same similar industries. Um, so I think I have a, a pretty good perspective on things and plus running VO North, I have a good high level overview of just the industry in general. So I created this program and it covers everything from you know, current state of the industry to what it's like, what a directed session is like from start to finish, how to set up your home recording space, what equipment to buy, um, how to record auditions, edit auditions, microphone technique, ways to practice your craft, how to price yourself properly, um, how to negotiate, setting up your business, just everything involved in kind of getting the the nitty gritty, the solid foundation in place for a proper successful voiceover career. I've been seeing ads around where they say you can launch your book, your first voiceover job in 15 days with nothing but your phone. That is not how to start a proper voiceover career. That is no, <laughs> that's just no. Uh, so the, the aim of this program is to teach them to just show you 
everything you need. And it's laid out step by step too. do one thing at a time. And, um, and then in, at the end, you should be set up for a lucrative voiceover career. So yeah. if, I mean, if, a, if a voiceover career is, is a house, then yeah. the, the VO kickstart program is the foundation of that house. Talk a little bit about VO North. Uh, it's no longer in existence. Uh, first of all, why? A few reasons, um, but kind of, I think it, it had its time. Um, Tanya, her agency has exploded in the past few years. Uh, I'm super happy for her. It's doing really well. Um, I was starting to get called in different directions to focus on things too. So it just kind of naturally came to a conclusion. Um, it's a lot, a lot, a lot of work. Uh, and I loved doing it. Uh, we both loved doing it, but it just, it took so much time. Um, we unfortunately just had to decide, you know, there's just so many other things going on in life. We can't, we can't dedicate that much time to it anymore. I have the utmost respect for uh, conference organizers, knowing people like you and Jamie Muffet and Karen Guilfrey and Hugh Edwards and the Collinses. It is a massive undertaking. Like the kind, like if probably the first time you bit it off, if you knew what was coming, you probably wouldn't have done it, right? I like to compare it to how they say childbirth is, you know, it progressively gets harder and harder and harder. And then you give birth and you're like, Oh my God, this is terrible. And then you have the baby. And afterwards you're like, Huh, mm. I could do that again. How do people find the VO kickstart program? Uh, they can go to dervlatrainer.com. That's um, my website. And then just click on VO kickstart program. And that's the sort of North American spelling, right? D E R V L A trainer with an OR. Oh, and until the end of February, I have a promotion going on $50 off um, the program. We oh, use nice. code February at checkout. Okay. Um, I've recently switched it up to it. You just, before you could only register during a certain window of time. And then it would start on a specific date. And over the course of four weeks, the modules would get released. I've switched it up. You can access it. As soon as you sign up, you get access to everything right away. You don't have to wait. There's a lot of people saying, oh, I missed the registration window. So I thought, you know what? Why, why not just make it accessible anytime? And, and people can go through it at their own pace. You have lifetime access. So Yep. That's the way we do the VO Freedom Master Plan. It seems to work very, yeah. very well, right? Uh, yeah. so VO Kickstart. We'll put the uh, link to that in the description along with the uh, February uh, discount code. Uh, but most of all, my friend, thank you so much for being so generous with your time and dropping thank by you. to talk to us today. We really appreciate it. Always a pleasure talking to you, Paul. Thank you for having me.